right, so we're going to be starting with our sauerkraut today. And the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to weigh your cabbage. You're going to want about, about uh, one and a half to two teaspoons of salt per pound of cabbage. So I used four pounds of cabbage and therefore I used about eight teaspoons of salt. And your salt um, in this case is also going to want to be a specific kind of salt. So you're going to want to use preserving salt or some kind of pure salt, kosher salt, pickling salt, something along those lines, not your iodized table salt, not your sea salt, none of that kind of stuff. Um, and then once you have your cabbage all weighed out and you have your salt all measured out, you're going to go ahead and you're going to cut your cabbage into quarters. No starting, you're going to actually take off all your outer leaves of your cabbage and any damaged leaves as well. So anything where, you know, bacteria or contaminants might have gotten in, go ahead and remove all those leaves so that you have really fresh, healthy looking outer leaves. And then from there, once you finish that, go ahead and quarter your cabbage, cut it into fourths, just like you see me doing, and remove the cores. And then from there, now you've got your beautiful four quarters of cabbage. Go ahead and wash those really, really well. You're going to want to remove as much bacteria and contamination, anything that might have, uh, you know, got on there and made it dirty. Get rid of all that as much as you can. Uh, you know, really scrub these hard and wash them well. And then um, once you're done with that, then you'll just, you're going to go ahead and cut it into, you know, really thin slices. So kind of shred that cabbage. Now, an interesting thing to note, because um, sauerkraut is typically considered a German invention, but actually it was the Chinese who made sauerkraut, and they were making it about 2,000 years ago, more than that actually, um, and the workers on the Great Wall were the ones that were eating this fairly regularly as they were building the Great Wall of China. And the Chinese sauerkraut is not made using salt, it's actually fermented with rice wine. So that's an interesting fact. And it was probably brought to Europe about a thousand years ago with the Mongol hordes of Genghis Khan. After they had plundered China, they brought it with them to Europe. So also pretty interesting. And um, they were the ones that, you know, instead of using the wine, they used salt to draw out the water from the cabbage, which is then added to the cabbage, and that's what gives it that juice, which um, will often accompany sauerkraut. And then another interesting fact is that the Dutch, um, they use sauerkraut, and they would um, take it with them on ships as a way to prevent scurvy, because it doesn't spoil, like fresh fruits and vegetables, which is the reason that scurvy was so prevalent. So that's uh, also another interesting fact. All right, so here we have, you can see, we are shredding up that cabbage. And we have got all three quarters done, and here we're on our last quarter. And you just want to make those fairly thin, and you can see you don't necessarily have to, you know, cut each slice any more than that because the cabbage will naturally kind of fall apart and shred. And so there we go, get it in there, kind of pull it apart as you're putting it into the bowl. You're going to want a fairly large bowl for this. Then you go ahead and add your salt. So this was only one head of cabbage, it's about two pounds. So there we've got about four teaspoons of salt. All right. And then you're going to want to just take your hands and just kind of work that salt into the cabbage. Um, you want that, you know, the salt very distributed, very even throughout the cabbage because what that salt's going to do is it's going to, through osmosis, pull that water out of the cabbage, which is what we want to happen. And that will produce our brine solution that will then um, be what is primarily using, uh, making the fermentation happen. So, and keeping out all the bad bacteria. So you can see here, we have, you know, really press that cabbage and, uh, you know, make sure you're taking out any kind of rotten or bad parts that you see as you're going through there. Then you're going to set that to the side. 
um, for about 15 minutes. Okay. Then when you pull it back, um, now you're going to want to massage the cabbage, really kind of work it and press it and squeeze out the water. Okay, for about five minutes. So you should be getting quite a bit of liquid out. And I didn't quite have enough when I was done with this, so I had to make a little extra brine. And um, for that, you're going to want about a teaspoon per cup of water that you, a teaspoon of salt per cup of water that you make for the brine. So if you need any extra brine, that's the, uh, that's the quantities that you're going to use to make your 2% salt solution for the, for the extra brine. Okay. So now after you have massaged your cabbage, after you've really worked it and pressed out as much of the liquid as you can and gotten it nice and soft and ready, then you will go ahead and you'll take it and you'll get a preserving jar. Um, and so you will want to make sure that you have a weight on top to keep your cabbage underneath the brine. Now my jars are special preserving jars. They've got little springs on top that uh, make sure that the cabbage stays pressed down. So uh, that's kind of a nice handy feature on these jars. If you don't have that, just make sure that you put something, you know, extremely clean, make sure that you've sanitized it, probably in boiling water, and and uh, just get something heavy that you can put on top, a, a stone or a weight of some kind, so that your cabbage stays packed down. And you will take a cabbage leaf, so you'll take a cabbage leaf and cut it out in the uh, shape of the top of the jar, and you'll see we'll do this here in a minute. Um, and then you'll put that on top so that the weight can sit on there and press down fairly evenly. Okay, so here you see our jars are pretty nicely packed down. And that is our cabbage in there. And now we'll be putting our brine solution on top. And, yep, so here you see cutting out the shape of the top of the jar. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, I'm a little bit more of a stickler for things like that, but you, you can just, you know, get it fairly even on there, and that'll work. But, and there we have it. There's our cabbage with our cabbage leaf on top to make sure that we press it down. And we're going to go ahead and add our brine. And you'll see about how much brine you want in there. You don't really need a whole lot because there's the cabbage is pretty tightly packed in there. And as you can see, we did not have enough for our second jar. So then I will go ahead and make a little bit extra. There we go. Making sure that that is compressed. Push down. Put the lid on. And you're going to want to store that in a cool, dry location. One to four weeks. And then go ahead and after that time, store it in the refrigerator.